you ask me, where's the money? Where's the money? I mean, I don't know where the money is. I've never been good with figures, you know that. I don't know anything about math. It was never my good subject. Hey, everybody. My name is Rob Woodbridge. This is episode number six of Where's the Money? You can find me at, at Rob Woodbridge or, of course, from Untether.tv. And joining me always, as always, Mr. Doug. Doug, how are you doing? I am doing well, sir. No longer dead. Much better. No longer dead. I love that. I love that. No longer on your deathbed, we should say. You, it's not a miracle resurrection, is it? It was close. It was close, was it? Touch and go. Touch and go. Well, of course, this is where we dive into products that we wonder, or companies that we wonder, whether or not they're actually going to be able to make some money. So that's why it's aptly named, Where's, where's the Money, right, Doug? Where's the Money? Today, we are tackling uh, this product right here, Highlight. This is a product that is available, that was only available in the States up until March 1st, and it is now available around the world. And I guess that they are launching at, really launching at South by Southwest, which starts later this week. Right? Have you used this yet? Have you used this yet, Doug? Oh, have I used this yet? Yeah. Uh, I've tried to use it. I, this is actually the second time that I've tried to kind of sign up. Uh, before back in the day when they were in beta, but they actually hadn't launched in Canada yet. And then once the, the I guess the North American release came out on the, the first, I've gotten it. But as of yet, have not had a, basically you sign up and, and uh, it says, hey, we'll, we'll let you know when your friends are around. And I do not have a single friend using this app yet, except for you. Yeah, well, and so. we're not in the same city, so it doesn't really help, does it? <laughs> yeah. But but I think that that's Which the problem. Possibly the... I think I think that's the problem with this thing is that it's quite uh, you know I think in a in a location like South by Southwest in Austin I think it'd be great. Yeah. But if you're sitting alone, it's not so, not so great. Our antisocial natures are not uh, befitting this app. No, 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 no. So what do you think? Is this something that uh, like I've interviewed a couple of guys, a couple of companies in here? Company called Radar, um, company called uh, Banjo, recently done. What do you think? Is this something that uh, that these guys are in that playing field around social discovery, discovering your friends or people that are around you that are part of your social sphere? Is this a business? Is it a business? Hey, well, okay. So it, I, I think I guess that we're assuming that this is the next big big thing for South by Southwest. That it's gonna it's gonna just be an incredible tool for people to figure out where their friends are at during the show. Um, and then that will kick off the growth. It's kind of like what happened with Foursquare. And then when everyone takes it back to their individual city, it'll become useful. So assuming that that happens, assuming that that growth happens, these apps, is, is there a business around this? In this, the one interesting thing that in Scoble that he's talked about this app quite a few times now is that it's, it's adding a second level of social information on top of the social data that makes Facebook really important. Um, so what's the easiest way to make money off of that data, I guess, is the question that we should be asking. Well, I wonder if this is just another extension of what Facebook should be doing. Because you log into Facebook and it pulls your social graph from Facebook and it says, okay, this person's near you. This person's around you. And, you know, by the list of the investors, I mean, they've been invested by... Uh, Benchmark Capital, uh, Silicon Valley, uh, SV Angel, Crunch Fund, and a group of angel investors. I'm going to assume that this is, they, they just closed the seed round, that this is a, this is obviously a trend, but is this a feature of a much bigger product like Facebook, or can they stand alone? I, I, I wonder, how do they turn this into revenue? It's the, it's the buzz, like every year South by Southwest is, but do they turn it, how do they turn it into money? Well, I, I think it's the feature, it's a, it's a product that relies upon features of, of social networks, but it's not necessarily the feature of one specific social network. I think I think to their benefit, they're only Facebook right now, but if as they add Twitter, Foursquare, LinkedIn, and other social networks, that that separation and the the, the I guess the different social graphs that you have there will, will make the app more useful than just having <coughs> Feature of of Facebook or 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 Twitter or, or any other specific application, right? Because I guess one of, one of the cool things is that it's it's a really interesting way to kind of meet associated people, whether that's in a in a really friendly social capacity or if that's in a pure money business capacity. Um, so I, 
I don't I don't think I don't think it's that that issue there where they're going to be limited by that. But I, I really guess it, it really depends on what group in those uh, series of demographics kind of picks up and really starts using the app. Is this is this an app for pe people to meet VCs? Is this just an app for the valley? Or is it an app for everyone to know that, hey, I, my friend's two coffee shops down from me. I can go hang out with them. Well, I've used it. I mean, I, I can't use it, but I've used Banjo. And Banjo is an equivalent to this where it's it, it has a much broader penetration. They've included all social uh, environments, so Twitter friends, Foursquare. So the, the premise is really simple. You check in. Um, and whenever you check in on Foursquare, uh, Banjo knows that because it's a linked account. And what ends up happening is that these two come together. And uh, so when I check in in a location, it scans other people who have checked in in a location and says, okay, this person is near you. It's 200 meters from you, 300 meters from you. And you can engage that way. Whereas Sonar uh, basically says, you're here, stamped. These are the people that are around you and allows you to reach out to them. So one's, one's kind of a passive uh, environment in Sonar. One, it, like Banjo, is aggressive. It says, listen, that person is near you and there's a little alert that pops up. And then Highlight just by doing it, uh, I think they're a little bit late to the game, but just by doing it by popping up um, uh, through Facebook, I think that it's, it's, it's a start, but they're far behind the other two, I think, is, is what it's happening. And those two guys haven't figured out how to monetize yet. And when I talked to Damien, the CEO of and founder of Banjo, what he talked about in the monetization standpoint is that they're, they're trying to create a killer experience first. They have monetization strategies in their head, but they don't want to implement until, until the time is right or until, they, until acceptance is right. So he's thinking longer term, long, long, long term. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I, I think highlights a little different in that I think their biggest focus is on the way that you interact after the app has told you that someone's around that you might want to meet, that there's a relationship there and that, that there's streamlined focus, not even on, you know, saying you're here broadcasting, like more like a banjo. It, they're really focused on just doing all the connection for you and the seeing the follow-up from that and then monitoring that history as well right so knowing how you met people and things like that but so yeah obviously they're holding their monetization strategy but like okay, let's for apps around people connecting in uh, real-time environments we I, I remember I was thinking a lot about bump when I was prepping for this yeah. and the idea that like the idea there is like, yeah, it's the person to person connection, but they're really going to get big when you can bump with a brand and have um, that, that real time connection. I don't see that easy route for something like this. So I, I, I don't know how money flows into this system unless, unless it becomes such a great tool for networking see, that people would pay for that kind of shared access almost the way that people pay for like additional features in linkedin and things like that well let's talk about that because i think that maybe this is i mean if it is really a just a peer-to-peer -peer, if they're trying to make money i guess there's two ways if they're trying to make money off of the peer-to-peer -peer piece which is quite literally i want to connect with you doug oh because you're somebody that i uh have not been able to in the real world you're in a you're at a, uh, at a conference or at south by southwest or something like that and I, uh, I want to pay. I want to. I pay to meet you. Whatever that is, you can set your auction price to be able to be introduced to me, right? So if you're if you're somewhere, I'd say, hey, you 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 want to you want to meet me? My auction price at a place like South by Southwest is a hundred bucks. You deposit that into an account, maybe it's a charity, uh, and and I'll meet with you, or I'll I'll exchange contact information with you. It seems pretty chimps, chintzy, right? Um, the other side of it is, as you said, brands. I think is that maybe brands are the ones who extend this. Where I'm, I'm near to a Tim Hortons or a Starbucks. Uh, when I check in, let me know if there's a deal there. You know, send me a notification when I'm near a, a Starbucks because I just need to be near a Starbucks. It's, it'll be like going off every second corner. So would that be based upon Facebook pages that you've liked then? Like sure. how? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, like you know, what the interesting. Oh, go ahead. No, no. I think it all has to do with that. Is that uh, it's inference. It's an, it becomes an inference engine where you, um, you know, the combination of your social environment, your close friends, and your likes and dislikes, the pages that you've liked, tell you that uh, that something that you will like is coming towards you, and that 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 something that you like is paid for by that brand. How is so? How is that any different or better than the, what? Foursquare provides them. Like, what? How does that differentiate them to even disrupt that industry? 
openness, right? So may maybe what it is is because Foursquare is Foursquare. It's a check-in platform, and it's powering a lot of the location. But but something like Sonar or something like uh, Banjo who leverages all these social environments. And it's the same thing that Highlight, is, in essence, is going to be doing as well. Uh, but you're right, Foursquare, pr predominant, 15 million users. Why aren't why aren't they in this business as well? Which uh, which seems like the next logical step. And that's why I keep coming back to this. Is something like Highlight just a feature of somebody else's business? Well, it, I don't I don't think so because it's it's not anybody's business yet, and I don't think the silver bullet um, use case in that makes it like a natural thing. Like, oh yeah, I use an app in this way, and it gets me that relationship that I want, and that brands want to leverage. Like, you know, it could be a situation where, you know. As you're connecting with Facebook friends, the app's probably aware of these two people. Like, oh, hey, you you know you both know Jim, and you're also both fans of this band, so you might want to check it out, or or things like that, or 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 talk over that, which is which is useful information, right? Um, or even you know you guys both seem to like Starbucks because you're both fans of Starbucks and you're around here. We'll give you a free coffee or something like that. So it's it's less about the it's using the brand as an intermediary to help the connection between two people. Um, I, I think that creates a bit of separation from the other people just trying to have location relationships with brands. Um, and I also think one interesting thing is um, if they know all your Facebook friends and they know your the brands that you you like or friend or whatever, um, because you're they're also tracking where you are at all times. They're adding a like a level of just location data on top that Facebook doesn't know unless you're using places, right? Yeah. So that's got to be like if they wanted to go pure advertising, just straight banner ads type thing, that could be really useful because they you, you could say, hey, hey, brand X, this subset of your Facebook users is going around here right now doing these things. You know, <clears throat> and and I think that that comes to it. like the worst thing that they can do is get into display ads. So maybe targeted ads are a little bit better, but display ads is the worst thing that they could do. And you, so maybe that they have the they have enough uh, capital that they can hold off and wait for a business model to come to them. But but I think it has a lot to do with brands interacting, the one on one relationship. It's you've identified that you like Coke, um, and you are you know it's a sunny degree sunny day. It's thirty eight degrees outside. You check in downtown somewhere, and it says, oh by the way. There's a Coke machine right around the corner, right? And uh, those kind of things, may maybe that's where these guys go. What do you guys think? Like, there's a whole lot of opportunity for these guys to make something of it with all of this location data, all of this social graph, the social data that comes through this, the preferences that everybody's put into Facebook and all the other social environments, and also the inference. You, you know, based on this, you'll probably like this. What do you guys think? Is this, can these guys, can Highlight make money or... Are these guys, just like every kind of cluster around South by Southwest, is this a company that will be bought, picked up by Facebook, picked up by another social network or Twitter or something to that extent in their monetization strategy around location and your social graph? What do you think? I don't know. I, I, I think we're going to know have a better idea after what happens after South by Southwest. And I, I think, yeah, here's another question, guys. Is this the type of user experience that you want from your mobile location applications? Is this what you're trying to get out of it? Because that's going to define how brands make money, right? It really is. Leave the responses somewhere down here, wherever you found this video, probably on untether.tv, straight down here, straight down here. Really appreciate you guys watching this. Thank you guys. And uh, go download uh, Highlight at, uh, I think it's at Highlight, what is it called? Highlight. Dot, it's highlight.ht. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's in the app store. Just go and download it. Let us know what you think. And if you're if you're in any of our cities, Ottawa, Toronto, yeah, f friend up Doug and I. We're lonely in the highlight world. That's it. This has been Where's the Money? Thanks for watching, folks.